Hi guys, today I'm going to talk to you about jamming with Gatsby themes. So a bit about me, um, I'm a front-end developer, I've been doing it for about three years, and this year in particular, uh, I started my own little studio with my partner, who's a designer, called Little and Big. And uh, the reason why we started our own studio was we really wanted to pursue projects that were particularly creative. So since starting, um, our first project was for a photographer. And um, it was particularly cool because he came to us with nothing. He didn't have a business name. He just knew he liked taking photography. And um, his style was that he liked to do documentary style and with film, so analog, not digital. Um, so we had to sort of make an aesthetic that sort of matched that. And that was sort of like an old newspaper. Um, we also did a site for a charity, which was, we did sort of like a illustrated uh, scrolly telling type thing to sort of explain their concept. And um, their deal was that they were trying to raise funds to support farmers to transition to regenerative practices. So instead of uh, industrial farming, lot farming, stuff like that. And most recently, we've just, uh, this went live on Thursday. Um, we did a women's shelter um, in Redfern, which is a suburb in Sydney. And uh, the cool thing about this project was uh, they got 16 illustrators to donate um, artworks, and we had to work them into the website. So I promise that all this context will tie back in. Uh, I'm here because I built a Gatsby theme. So um, we've heard a lot about Gatsby themes today, and I wasn't sure whether everyone would be across them. Hopefully you are now, but just in case, I thought I'd give my own take on it. Um, I like to think of Gatsby themes a bit like Lego blocks. Um, they're little bits of a single piece of functionality you can essentially snap onto your website. Um, they're composable, so you can have many Lego blocks that snap onto your website. You can stack them on top of each other. And um, you can take it off and put it on another website. They're universal. Um, they're, they're not tied to one site. So um, when we first heard about um, Gatsby Themes, it was through uh, the Theme Jam, which was a contest. and. Um, I had to research what a Gatsby theme was and um, figure out what they meant for us going forward as a little studio. And um, primarily, it was, hey, we can make these components, publish them as a theme, and we'd build them once really well and never have to do it again. So we'd save time and save budget. Um, and in the process of saving time and saving budget, um, being uh, in the pursuit of sort of creativity, it means we'd have more time to do stuff like that, which is very hard to justify to your client uh, because if it is schmizzle, which is what we like to refer to as creativity, um, it, it generally you spend a lot of time just researching. It's, it's very hard to justify. So if, if you can knock off a couple of pieces of functionality with your themes and then use that time to work on the fun stuff, and also um, give back to create open source. So um, I use a lot of stuff from open source, but I'd never gotten a chance to publish my own piece of, that, of software that other people could use. So this was my first chance. So when we set out to create uh, our theme for the theme jam, we made a criteria. This isn't the criteria for all themes, but this is what we thought would be a good criteria. So we wanted it to be uh, a piece of functionality that would be incredibly useful. So it's something you'd find on almost every site. Um, also, typically, a piece of functionality that you don't want to repeatedly build. Uh, and it's not a, a piece of functionality or a page where you want to make a statement. Um, and on that point, um, it's e for that reason, it's, it's quite generic, so it's easily reskinnable. So what we came up with was Gatsby theme legals. 
So a lot of sites have privacy policies and you guys being in Europe, um, I mean, you've, you've had the GDPR, so you've pe faced real repercussions for not being transparent about how you manage people's data. So, I mean, I'm seeing those little cookies, uh, tooltips everywhere. Um, so most sites have a privacy policy. So we thought if we could do this really well, have a really clean design and all the bells and whistles, it would make a pretty good theme. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the theme out of the box. Um, and essentially, it's quite straightforward. It's just text. And the most complicated part of it is you've got this sticky um, table of contents that follows you through the page and uses uh, intersection observers to track where you are. And you can jump to certain parts. And it's also responsive. So across tablets and desktop. Thank you. <laughs> so this sounds great, but it's, it's only worth something if it actually can be applied. And uh, I'll show you how we've used it in our latest projects. So this is the very same theme, but just reskinned to this brand. And it looks quite different, but we can see the underlying structure is still there. We've just changed the colors and the fonts. So what's involved? Let's have a look at the code. So your first port of call for when you're customizing a theme is the theme file. You, you, you just override variables that are used throughout the, the theme using theme UI. Um, so here you can see I'm, ex I'm extending the base theme and I'm just changing the heading font to APQ, the body font to Work Sans, and I'm changing the colors from shades of purple to just a pink. Um, and I've also expanded the wrapper, which sort of binds content to the center of the screen when it's a really wide um, monitor. Next, um, like this site had a header and a footer, and it had some SEO magic happening behind the scenes. So um, all I had to do here was I had to find um, the theme's page wrapper and just replace it for the one that I was using in the project. So this, this is component shadowing. I think you've he probably heard about this in the page. So you, you pretty much just have a mirror of a component um, that exists in the theme, and you're making an equivalent component that matches it using the file paths. And another thing you'll notice is we've got quite a funky um, sort of opening banner here in the default theme, and then I've just opted for something a bit more simplistic here. And uh, that was also done with component shadowing. So I found that component, which is the opening banner, and I've just replaced it with another component, which is called Simple Page Hero, which just plucks the props that I need to do that, so a title and a subtitle. So um, what's next? Um, so personally, the way I've, I've looked at themes is uh, I've used it to sort of tackle mundane pages. So I, I just do them once, and I don't have to do them again. And, uh, Maybe it also means you guys don't have to do them again. Um, so the next sort of mundane page I tackled was frequently asked questions. Um, so this, this theme's live. You can use it if you want. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. So it's pretty simple. You've got your list of questions. And um, they're collapsible and open all. And uh, you've got a search bar. And you've got categories. So just different ways to sort of like refine, hone in on a particular question. And it's also responsive. Um, I'll do that here. Ah, and another cool thing is 
Um, it's got these URLs where, say, like someone asks you a question about something, and you can say, oh, hit this link, and it will go to the page, it'll scroll down, and open the question for you. Um, and also, we applied it, so it works. And that's what this looks like on the latest site we built. That's it. Um, so those themes are there if you want to use them. I I'd love to get some feedback. And you can find me on Twitter. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Helen. Um, and I just want to say one more huge thank you.